Hi, my name is Sano Eli, and I'm getting my life together at 26 years old. I've been working as an artist since 2014, been practicing art religiously since I was six years old, and have loved boneless buffalo wings for even longer than that. But that's kind of irrelevant here. As a 26-year-old female artist going on 27 in August, I'm a starving artist, I say with air quotes, who's just trying to make it in this world amongst the rise of AI, oversaturation in my field, and imposter syndrome that floats by on the regular. A lot of times I struggle with feeling like I'm too late to the party. I see a lot of artists who are as much as 10 years younger than I am, or even younger than that, with art styles that could knock my portfolio out of the water. I see my peers with quadruple the following, a conga line of clients knocking at their door, and the ability to afford these gorgeous art studio spaces outside of their little bedrooms that I've only ever dreamt of all extremely well-deserved and something I'm genuinely super, super happy about for them. Any artist thriving is a massive win in my book for sure, but it definitely makes that imposter syndrome ring in the back of my head when I think about it too much. So how did this all start? I had this on-again, off-again relationship with art when I first started freelancing from 2014 to 2017. I was still figuring out my art style and had dreams of working in the gaming industry as a concept artist of some sort. But I was still pretty new to painting on a tablet and definitely had my work cut out for me. Since I have ADHD, I also had a million other passions I wanted to pursue at the same time, one of which actually turned into a side hustle starting in 2016 as a really fun voice acting career that I still work as part-time to this day. I've always loved the arts in all its forms, whether it be visual or performing arts. But I think my very first love has always been drawing. I had taken a break from visual arts to focus on my acting dreams in 2016 to 2017, where I'd literally go months at a time without even looking at my drawing tablet, but something always pulled me back. In 2018, I got fed up with this one or the other mentality I had adopted over the years and just said, screw it, I'm gonna pursue both. Though my ADHD certainly took over and in 2018, I became so obsessed with getting back into visual art that I went on a voice acting hiatus for a while. With all the time in the world to spend pursuing visual art, I opened up my first ever online store in March of 2018 and created fan art merchandise dedicated to my favorite video game series of all time, Final Fantasy, and my favorite music group of all time, BTS. I think I just became so fixated on the prospect of people actually liking my art enough to spend their money on it that I just kept going, going, going. I didn't have enough stability to support myself financially all on my own, but I was happy just being able to do something I was so passionate about every single day with a clear goal for my future in mind. I had some really great months where I'd make like $3,000 in a single month, and then I had some bad months where I'd just barely even break $200 in a month. But even so, I feel very lucky that even since I was a little kid, I've always had that very distinct passion for something that I knew I wanted to dedicate my life to. I remember playing Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts video games and flipping through Japanese fashion magazines and just being so enamored by the artistry that went into all of it. It felt like a gravitational pull was just tugging me in the direction of art all my life. Or it's as if I came out the womb with a paintbrush in my hand and knew exactly what I was supposed to do with my life. And that passion made and currently makes all the hardships, all the bad months, all the rejections, and all the fear feel completely worth it. And so, we fast forward to now. I think I've actually reached a place where I'm finally where I want to be with my art skills and have specific aesthetics I love that I can call back to and infuse into each illustration or concept I create. But if I'm being completely honest with you guys, 
The starving artist agenda that's always lingered over my head like a rain cloud is still going strong even now. I think a lot of people see sizable numbers on an artist's social media, like my Instagram having above 15,000 followers, for example, and assume we have it all figured out. Unfortunately, every day is a struggle and product launches on my online store can feel like jumping into a pool of sharks sometimes. Having no clue whether things will go according to plan, could go even better than planned, or could tear you up into shreds. I felt like I had a really big turning point in my art career in mid-2023, where I felt like something about my art was evolving, and with it, my potential career prospects as a whole going forward. I saw the greatest amount of improvement in my body of work that I'd ever seen in that time period, and even now, I look at pieces I made back in December of 2022, for example, and laugh. Not because I thought I was a horrible artist or anything back then, but because I hated the relationship I had with my art pre-2023 and how much it showed in my work. I wanted to take all of that bundled up negativity surrounding how uncertain, unconfident, and underdeveloped I'd felt all those years and transform it into progress. I wanted to use them as an example of what I was doing wrong, or perhaps what I could do to help make my art feel right in my mind. And thus explains the title of this YouTube video. After this long-winded story session, I can definitely say that I feel like 2024 is a turning point for me in my art career. As a 26-year-old female artist going on 27 in August, I'm still that same starving artist who's just trying to make it in this world. But I decided that I would spend 2024 pushing the boundaries of what I considered myself good enough for, saying yes to things more even if they scare me, applying for that art gallery, that art job, reaching out to potential clients instead of waiting for them to come to me, pushing past that innate desire to hide myself and my art away out of a fear of being too seen. In 2024, I don't lead with imposter syndrome, and I don't lead with the type of fear that stops you from taking steps forward. I lead with the type of fear that makes me not want to miss out on anything. The type of fear that can't stomach the idea of never achieving my goals. The type of fear that feels those butterflies in my stomach when an opportunity arises, but allows it to be a driving force in my pursuits rather than a deterrent based off of my anxieties. The type of fear that's more afraid of never trying at all than being too afraid to be seen trying my best. And make no mistake, this isn't a grind, hustle mentality type of path for me. I'm mentally ill, I'm a human being, I require and deserve breaks to function. I refuse to drag myself through sludge just to make ends meet. And me having the ability to even choose this artistic path is definitely a privilege I will never take for granted. And that's exactly why I've chosen this path to begin with. As a neurodivergent individual, it's honestly a miracle that I could find something I'm so immersed in that I could spend hours a day focusing my energy into it without getting bored or too exhausted to keep trying. So I plan to keep pursuing this passion in the healthiest way I possibly can for both myself physically and mentally, which is still something I'm trying to work out how to do even after all these years, but 2024 definitely feels like a light at the end of the tunnel kind of year for me and I hope that ends up being the case. Thank you. 
Now that you've heard my story, or just a small glimpse into it, I want to share my first big win of 2024 with you guys. I've officially started selling my merchandise at a physical store for the very first time ever, and I'm unbelievably excited. If you live in the Las Vegas area or plan to visit during the month of March, you can pick up a big selection of my goods at a store called Cosmic Fluff. They have tons of adorable merchandise and lots of other amazing, incredible artists who are selling there too. Huge thank you to the owners of Cosmic Fluff for trusting me with that booth space and being so wonderful and so helpful every step of the way. So if you'd like to check it out, I have the address for the store listed in the description box of this video. So if you've reached the end of this video, comment a blue heart emoji and let me know what you're most passionate about or just any of your thoughts about what I've talked about today. If you like this video, don't forget to comment, share this video with anyone who might be interested in it, leave a like, and subscribe to my channel so you can see more content like this from me. And let me know down in the comments section if there are any other topics you'd like me to cover in my next YouTube video. Until next time, my friend.